Hello everyone, I'm the caretaker, and welcome to BC's Video Vault. This was a segment that originally appeared on the Graveyard Show podcast in 2010, and it was a movie review segment where Brian Collins from Horror Movie A Day would review movies once a month. Now, there were six of these segments in total before the Graveyard Show podcast ended in mid-2010. This sixth and final segment comes to us from Graveyard Show podcast number 73, and it's from June 24th, 2010. In it, Brian reviews the films Mega Piranha, Kingdom of the Spiders, and Hellbound. Enough from me. Let's hear from Brian as we enter BC's Video Vault. Hey folks, BC from HorrorMovieAday.com here with another edition of the Video Vault, where I take a look at a couple of films that you should check out and another you should avoid. First up is Mega Piranha, and no, this isn't the one I'm telling you to avoid. While I certainly saw better movies this month, none surprised me as much as the asylums would be cash-in on Alexander Aja's Piranha 3D, which was delayed until August, making Mega Piranha the rare asylum knockoff that actually came out first. Uh, unlike Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus, this one has a ton of action, and not just enough to make a cool trailer. I'm talking car chases, you know, like splinter cell style infiltration sequences, and yes, giant piranha attacks. Uh, all this stuff makes up like 75% of the running time, which is a ratio I'm pretty happy with. The effects are suck, of course, but they always suck in these things, and at least now there's a quantity to make up for the lack of quality. No one writes a movie called Mega Piranha expecting high art, but this is the first time the asylum managed to make a movie that wasn't just a giant bore. And I dare say that the scene with the Mega Piranha, now the size of houses, actually kamikaze buildings alongside a river, is actually better than the legendary Shark Eats the Plane scene from Mega Shark. Highly recommended goofy fun. Then we have the surprisingly good Kingdom of the Spiders, which was re-released on DVD in a nice special edition. Um, it's a Jaws knockoff, but it sort of turns into more like Night of the Living Dead, uh, with our survivors holding up in a cab and besieged by thousands of arachnids. Uh, for some reason, I thought the film was about giant mutated spiders, but it's like arachnophobia, their normal size, which I think is actually scarier. It gets a bit slow at times, but the big attack scenes in the film's third act more than make up for it, especially when it becomes clear that the filmmakers don't consider anyone too young to get killed by the rampage of spiders. Also, it offers a rare, low-key William Shatner performance, which sort of single-handedly makes the movie worth watching. Uh, he still shatters out every now and then, but for the most part, he's just a regular guy with a regular way of saying things. And finally, the spiders are real. Uh, not CGI, so it wasn't invented yet. Um, and no PETA, apparently, because the spiders are obviously killed in a few scenes. Uh, the filmmakers did try to be hu as humane as possible, though. Uh, there are many scenes where people are just, like, you know, tiptoeing around the spiders instead of stomping on them, uh, you know, to prevent more unnecessary arachnicide. DVD has a lot of extras to concern the film's age, you know, it's from 1977, I believe, uh, including a new interview with Shatner, so it's a good disc to pick up. And finally, I want to make sure you don't get duped into the Chuck Norris vs. The Devil movie Hellbound from 1994. Um, for all the Chuck Norris jokes in the world, you'd think the last thing that the movie could be was boring, but that's the main problem with it, nothing happens. There's a quick fight with some street hoods early on, and then Norris spends like the next hour or so talking to witnesses and historians and such, trying to figure out why someone has been knocking off priests, mostly off screen. Uh, even though it's something to do with resurrect, resurrecting Satan, and the opening prologue shows a little demon monster, Chuck never actually fights anything supernatural until the very end of the movie, and the fight is incredibly stiff and dull. The bad guy just stands there, letting Chuck kick him over and over. Uh, and I admit, I'm not a big Norris fan to begin with, but even as most diehard fans have to consider this one a major misstep. And worse, it was the last ever film from the Canon Group, ending a great B-movie legacy on a very, very low note. Uh, so definitely don't bother with that one. Keep your, uh, keep your opinion on Chuck and Canon high. Um, so that's it for the video vault. Be sure to join me again next month, and keep checking horrormovieaday.com for full reviews for these and well over a thousand other movies. All right. Thank you, Brian. Always great hearing your reviews. You can purchase Brian's book on Horror Movie A Day, appropriately titled Horror Movie A Day, The Book, wherever books are sold. And you can also catch Brian on the Shudder series Behind the Monsters. I would like to invite you to join me inside my graveyard for the Graveyard Show podcast, where I interview people from the world of horror. It is available right here on YouTube 
as well as everywhere podcasts exist. And you can also enter my Catacombs of Horror, which is a video production exclusive to YouTube, where I discuss different topics from the world of horror. Thank you for joining us, and as always, we look forward to seeing your comments below as well. That's going to do it for BC's Video Vault. It was fun bringing these six segments to you. And if you're new to this segment, well, you can find the other five right here on YouTube in the Graveyard Show Podcast's YouTube channel. For Brian Collins, I am the caretaker, and you've been listening to BC's Video Vault.